So this is the Sony Oldfield 7 and I personally really like this speaker because it sounds very balanced, it gets loud and it has a ton of bass. The only real drawback is that it is a little big but the Sony Oldfield 7 is quickly becoming one of my new favorite speakers and believe it or not I'm starting to like it more than the UE Hyperboom which was my favorite speaker to use during my at home workouts during the time that we couldn't go out. So today we're going to see how the Sony Oldfield 7 compares to the UE Hyperboom. We're going on pricing. The Sony Oldfield 7 has a retail price of $500, but I do expect the speaker to go on sale from time to time. And this speaker is brand new for 2024. But then there's the UE Hyperboom, which came out in the winter of 2020, and this speaker likes to retail for $400. Personally, I really feel that the UE Hyperboom is overdue for an upgrade. Nonetheless, if you want to pick either of these two speakers up, they'll be linked down below. And if you want to further support the channel, pick up a big head approved hat. Link down below. We've got trucker hats and snapbacks. By buying a hat, you help the unbiased and unsponsored videos coming, and it also helps us cover more products and produce more versus videos. Thank you to everyone who's already bought a hat, and look out for more designs coming soon. And also, please remember to hit that like button, and let's get subscribed. Now first, there's the design of these speakers. Now both of these speakers are decent enough to take on the go with you, however the old 7 simply dwarves the Hyperboom. But nonetheless, both of these speakers are very durable because they both have mostly fabric wrap bodies so they can stand up to constant abuse from bumps and scrapes and they are both water resistant. So if they get rained on or if a drink gets spilled on them, they're going to be perfectly fine. But besides the old 7 dwarfing the Hyperboom, the old 7 also has a built-in light feature that's tucked away in the passive radiators. Now this light feature is decent and you have a few different lighting modes to choose from but personally I don't use this light feature just because it's so hard to see and instead I just enjoy the improved battery life because if you do use the light feature on this speaker that is going to take its toll on the battery life. Now when it comes to battery life the UE Hyperboom has an advertised battery life of 24 hours whereas the Sony Oldfield 7 has an advertised battery life of 30 hours. However this advertised battery life on the UE Hyperboom of 24 hours is with the speaker playing a little below 50% volume. Whereas with the Oldfield 7, its advertised battery life of 30 hours is with the speaker playing at 32% volume, which is already a good listening volume, with the light feature turned off but with the old feature turned on, which is good. And if you were to use this speaker with this light feature turned on, then it is going to be good for around 25 hours of playback time. But real world use with both of these speakers playing at 80% volume, which I feel is a really good volume to use with friends, then both of these speakers are going to be good for around 8 hours of playback time. However, 80% volume on the Old 7 is noticeably louder than 80% volume on the Hyperboom, and this is with the light feature on the Old 7 being turned off. So overall, battery life on the Old 7 is a little better than on the Hyperboom. But something that I really like about the Old 7 is that it charges via a standard AC port. So you can charge it with any standard double barrel AC cable. Whereas with the Hyperboom, it does charge via a DC port. So there is an external power brick that you have to worry about not losing or breaking. Because this is actually my second power brick for the Hyperboom. Now when it comes to connectivity, both of these speakers can be connected to two devices at the same time so you and a friend can both be DJ. Latency is not an issue for either of these two speakers so you can use them to watch videos with on your phone. And when it comes to audio codecs, the Hyperboom only has support for SBC, whereas the Old 7 has support for SBC, AAC, and LDAC, which is Sony's own in-house high-res audio codec. Just keep in mind that if you do want to use LDAC, you do have to be an Android user because iPhones top out at AAC. Now, regarding ports, both of these speakers have a USB-A port so that you can plug in your own devices and charge them up. Or with the old 7, you can also plug in a USB stick and play music off of it. Now I think it's great and all that both of these speakers have USB-A ports on them, but I still really wish that they had USB-C ports on them so that you can charge your own devices and or use them as a wired connection like you can with the USB-C port on the Xtreme 3, because most phones these days just come with USB-C to USB-C charging cables. But but with both of these speakers, they still have your standard 3.5 mm audio jack, so you can use them with a wired connection. Now, I know this sounds very basic, but I do have to point this out, because 3.5 mm audio jacks aren't all that common on smaller speakers these days. 
But something the Hyperboom has over the Old 7 is that it has an optical port. So if you want, you can connect a Hyperboom to your TV and use it as a soundbar. And personally, I am a little surprised that the Old 7 doesn't have an optical port because Sony's larger box speakers do have optical ports on them. But something the Old 7 does have over the Hyperboom is that it has a single quarter inch input so you can plug in a microphone for karaoke or you can plug in a guitar. Just keep in mind that you can only use the Old 7 with a single wired microphone and you can't use it with a wireless microphone like the wireless microphone that comes included with the Old Tower 10. But the important thing here is with the Old 7 you can do karaoke with it if you want but with the Hyperboom you can hook it up to your TV. TV. But with all that out of the way, let's talk about sound. Regarding speaker setup, the Old 7 has dual from firing woofers, dual from firing tweeters, and dual passive radiators that shoot out the sides. A pretty standard speaker setup. But then there's the Hyperboom, which also has dual woofers, dual tweeters, and dual passive radiators, but the setup here of these speakers is different. The woofers and tweeters both shoot out the front, but the passive radiators shoot out the back. So with the Hyperboom, you can very easily amplify its bass by simply playing placing it up against a wall. Now with both of these speakers, you can go in and adjust their EQ to your liking. But with the Hyperboom, I have always liked using it with its stock EQ, and with the Alt 7, it has its Alt button. There's Alt 1 and Alt 2. Now with Alt 1, you're gonna get more bass. And then there's Alt 2, which is also going to give you more bass, but it's also going to amplify its mids. So I like to use this speaker with Alt 2. Now with the Alt 7, if you use it while it's plugged in, you are are going to get a noticeable performance boost. It's going to get louder and it's going to have more bass. Whereas with the Hyperboom, you don't really get a performance boost when it's plugged in. Nonetheless, we're going to go ahead and jump into the sound test. Both of these speakers are playing at 87% volume. The Hyperboom is playing with its stock EQ and the Old 7 is playing with Old 2. And we're going to use these speakers while they're plugged in and unplugged. Now I'm talking 
Regarding sound quality, the UE Hyperboom leans towards a warmer sound signature and there's a good amount of resonance to its bass. And like I mentioned earlier, with the Hyperboom, you can very easily amplify its bass by putting it up against a wall because its rear passive radiators is going to have something to bounce its bass off of. However, the Hyperboom doesn't sound as open as the Ult 7 and the mids on the Ult 7 are a lot more pronounced. So with the Ult 7, you're going to get a similar amount amount of resonance in your bass, but your mids are going to be a lot more defined. So you're going to get a much more balanced listening experience with the Old 7. But then there's the max volume performance. The Old 7 gets noticeably louder than the Hyperboom. Now I feel that both of these speakers are good for like 15 people parties, but with the Old 7, you are going to get more volume out of it. And if you were to use it while it's plugged in, it's going to get louder and it's going to have more bass. So overall, I have always really liked the Hyperboom boom because of its compact size and it has a lot of bass but with the old 7 the speaker easily outperforms the hyper boom it gets louder and it sounds more open but finally, let's talk about pairing these speakers with other speakers. Now, with both of these speakers, if you have two of the same speakers, you can wisely pair them up and get them to play in left and right stereo mode. Or with the Hyperboom, you can pair it up to other UE speakers that are also using Party Up, like either a Mega Boom 3, a Boom 3, or an Epic Boom, and you can pair up to 150 speakers together and get them to play in sync. But then there's the Sony Alt 7, which is using Sony's Party Connect, and you can wirelessly connect it to other Party Connect speakers, like either another Alt 7 or to an XG500, XG300, XE300, XE200, or to an XB43, XB33, or to an XB23, and you can pair up to 100 speakers together as well, and you can get them to play in sync. But the really cool thing about Sony's Party Connect is that you can connect your smaller, more portable speakers to Sony's larger speakers like let's say the Sony Old Tower 10, XV900, XV800, XV500 or to an XP700 or to an XP500. The only sad thing here is that you cannot connect your Old 7 to Sony's new Old Field 1 because unfortunately the Old Field 1 does not have Party Connect. But overall, I do feel that if you plan on constantly pairing speakers together or if you plan on growing your collection of speakers, I think Sony is the better option here because there are more portable speakers to choose from and you can always connect your smaller speakers to your larger box speakers. But with all that being said, the UE Hyperboom is a speaker that I have always felt it has been slept on and it was one of my favorite speakers to use for multiple years. However, age is starting to show on the Hyperboom and UE speaker lineup is still pretty stale. But more importantly, from a sound quality standpoint, the Sony Old Field 7 easily outperforms the UE Hyperboom. It has a lot of resonance in its bass, but it also gets louder and it sounds more open and it sounds more balanced. If you made it this far, I guess you enjoyed the video, so hit the like button and get subscribed. If you want to pick any of the products up, they'll be linked down below. And if you want to further support the channel, check out the merch. I made some shirts and hoodies that look and feel great. And you know I can be very particular, so I'll only slap my name on something if I'm really proud of it.